Hey everyone, welcome to Ops Talks, uh, all things hybrid. In this session, Ops 116, we're talking with Eric Nemvet on how to respond to events on-prem using cloud services. So stay tuned. All right, let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hey Eric, how you doing? Pretty good, how are you? I'm good. So what exactly are we looking at in this session? So I'm going to give you guys an overview of Microsoft Retail's cloud monitoring framework that really helps enable on-prem and hybrid solutions like Microsoft Retail Stores to monitor and react to events that happen on-prem as well as in our hybrid IaaS environments. So we're using like cloud services to monitor and alert stuff that's happening yeah. on-prem, like without, there's no secret sauce in there. It's all commercially available. It's a hundred percent public offerings from Azure, from Microsoft. Uh, no, no internal secret squirrel stuff. <laughs> okay. All right. So take us through it. All right. Sounds good. So, um, what we do is we start with, uh, okay, we're going to run over the history, kind of where we were when we started this adventure in Microsoft Retail. Uh, some design considerations, uh, our implementation, a high-level overview of, of the entire framework and the integration points. We'll run through a demo and then cover a few references to get you started. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, Microsoft Retail Stores had a roughly 10-year legacy of on-prem uh, infrastructure challenges. We had a large SCOM farm. We had hundreds of duplicate alerts. So as new IT teams rolled in, um, we never really deprecated old alerts. We just added new ones. Oh. Um, we had huge uh, reliance on vendors. So... I remember when I first joined the team, I was like, hey, this machine's low on drive space. And they said, oh, just create a ticket. There was a question, did the ticket magically create, you know, fix the drive space? Or and it turns out there was an army of vendors to go do a lot of things on prem. Okay. Um, and then we also had a lot of uh, tough challenges around, hey, this is such a high visibility marketing thing for us that we were scared to make any changes that would potentially cause customer impacts. And then uh, we also had, due to the, the infrastructure and the way things were, when things went bad, you had these you know single weekend warrior heroics that happened where somebody stayed up 48 hours to rebuild a SQL table or whatever. Um, and so we weren't in a great place. We were in a place that was treading water. And so we wanted to kind of find a solution that helped us bridge the gap between 100% on-prem to how do we do a hybrid and eventually what does it look like if we moved our entire operations to the cloud? Okay. Well, this is, this is very, this sounds very familiar. Uh, maybe it's all my day, my years uh, in IT where um, getting so many alerts that it just becomes white noise and eventually you, you get tired of those alerts and you just start ignoring them. Or, <laughs> or or there are so many for the same things that you say, okay, well, I've already fixed that, so I'm not going to bother with the second one when, in fact, it's a new one. So is yeah. that kind of like the, the issues you were trying to address with that? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's, it's the traditional, you can't see the forest through the trees. We'd get, you know, hundreds of drive space alerts for the same drive, same machine, or multiple machines, and it would all be, you know, one common issue across all of them. And so we really needed to look at how do we first reduce the noise because you couldn't have a page or you couldn't be on call. It would just be 24 seven. And then the other, the other issue that happens when you get so many alerts, you lose focus on the critical alert. So yeah. we would have a significant amount of major incidents which represented something that would be visible or impactful to the customer. So imagine, you know, going through and being signed up for a distribution list and trying to find the one email that said, hey, I really need you to call me. And you've got thousands of emails every day that you, you know, 
open up to Outlook or, or whatever your email program is. It's, it just becomes unmanageable yep. and it leads eventually to really bad things. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of our audience are in the same boat. So that's great. Yeah. So some of the design things, uh, obviously our first goal is to prevent customer impacting events. We call them major incidents, anything that would prevent the customer from being able to come into the store, get a product, purchase the product and leave with the product. Um, mm -hmm. You know, other things like uh, video all down, any kind of brand damaging events, you know, like power was out. We couldn't even open the store, you know, video wall. It's huge marketing, awesome advertising platform. If that obviously had issues, it'd be a little bit of egg on our face. And the other thing that we really wanted to do was make this available uh, eventually as a showcase to other customers, retail, et cetera. Yep. Um, and base it 100% on Azure, Azure Public Offerings. Okay, which is, uh, I've talked to uh, uh, a lot of other uh, folks, and uh, often there's a like a vendor component somewhere in the middle where you get the alerts from SCOM, there is a vendor or a product that you have to buy that kind of massages things in the middle and then sends it out. In this case, this is completely uh, out of the box, uh, commercially available to anybody who's listening right now. They could just go out and set that up um, as is right now. Yep. yep. Perfect. There's, there's no secret sauce in this solution. All right. So, Eric, so why don't you take us through uh, what this solution looks like and like an overview of, of what uh, we're talking about here? Yeah, definitely. So here we have the entire framework and it's made up of multiple components. So we have the monitored resources. So these are both on-prem and cloud-based resources. So you have your local machines, your SQL servers, any custom apps, application logs, et cetera. And so we leverage the Azure Log Analytics uh, slash SCOM agent to go and monitor these on-prem solutions. And then for the cloud-based uh, solutions, you generally have app insights or, you know, some log logic app that goes interrogate something and then can send that data into uh, a log analytics repository. Okay. Um, next, we have your Azure monitoring. So this is your standard uh, Azure portal, uh, Azure monitoring solution. So you've got your, your log analytics source, your Azure alerting, and your Azure action groups housed. And then we have the cloud monitoring framework. And again, this is just a framework. It's designed to give you a almost plug and play solution where you focus on the alerting and the data that you care about to generate an alert. And then you, you work on what I need to do to solve that alert through a remediation runbook. It's basically an Azure automated PowerShell runbook and or a ticket. So obviously if, if things can't be solved, you wanna notify your users, you can you know, send email, generate a ticket in your own ticketing repository, et cetera. Um, and then finally, uh, everything in this framework is uh, sent out to application insights. So whether it was successful or it failed or what it did under the hood, it's all in, in application insights. Uh, so you can go back through and review where and what went wrong, um, you know, and, and help help yourself resolve those errors as well as, uh, uh, you know, whether your remediation was successful or not. Okay. And, and when we call this a framework, uh, we're not really, it's not like a .NET framework where people have to download and install something. It's just a, how we've organized and built this solution uh, to uh, address the issue that uh, that we have. Correct. Yes. Yes. And so some of the things that we wanted to do um, to address some of those is we wanted a, a, a framework that was simple enough that we could, with very little effort, migrate, you know, our, our infrastructure from like a dedicated on-prem solution like SCOM to something that, that's usable in the cloud and kind of bridge that hybrid gap. To that point, we've, we've, uh, provided an API or, or PowerShell commandlets to help you migrate your alerts off of 
the traditional SCOM into this infrastructure. So this has APIs to go and rebuild or build Azure alerts that will essentially replace over time your, your legacy SCOM alerts. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether or not uh, the alert is generated by SCOM or generated by log analytics or, or uh, Azure monitor alerts. Uh, they, they're all being addressed uh, the same way through this uh, framework. Correct. Yep. Yep. Ultimately, they all end up in a log analytics uh, source. And from there, they are queried through the Azure monitoring, Azure alerting system. Okay. All right. All right, so let's go through and look at the implementation. So obviously we needed something that brought us from SCOM to the cloud. So we looked at, at the time it was OMS. So we had the SCOM slash OMS agent. Um, we're still using that. Um, Azure alerting, uh, and I mentioned action groups. Uh, we need log analytics, log search functions, and ultimately we we can leverage blob storage. So one of the challenges that we have is there's no maintenance modes uh, once you go to a solution like this. And so what we looked at doing is storing our maintenance modes in Azure blob storage as a JSON file. So through some log searches, we can pull that blob storage in and that exposes our maintenance modes at the alert time. So we can say, hey, this server's down. We go check the blob storage. Hey, that server is currently in maintenance mode. We're good to go. We can ignore the alert. Um, the other thing we looked at is Azure Functions. So with Azure Functions, we can put load balancers in front of it. So you can have multiple regions host this self, uh, this cloud monitoring framework. Yep. And so that gets you out of kind of the, you know, I put all my eggs in one basket, you know, a region potentially goes down, we can spread out across multiple Azure regions, leveraging functions. Um, and then we also have PowerShell behind the hood. So there's very little, if any, compiled code in this solution. Uh, it's all based on Azure automation. So um, we don't have durable functions. It's all Azure jobs, Azure automation jobs. Okay. And then the Azure automation section, we have PowerShell runbooks and hybrid workers to reach your on-prem resources. Okay, so there's there, there's no there's no code uh, that's uh, there's there's no executables in there. It's all uh, PowerShell code that uh, all of our users or our, our audience can basically write um, a remediation package to fit what their problem would be, but that framework could deliver it. And, and resolve their issue um, as if it was written by somebody else. Correct. Yep. Yep. The, the, the entire framework is designed to, uh, to enable you as the end user to, you know, basically remediate and code your own remediation and your own alert, uh, you know, conditions. So, so it really focuses on putting the emphasis on you who should know your infrastructure best to go address, you know, not only alert on, but also address the, the things that go bump in the night in your ecosystem. Okay. And then finally, we we wanted telemetry. So we really looked at what, what are pretty good telemetry systems out there available out of the box. And we landed on application insights. You know, traditionally your Azure environments, your Azure services, et cetera, right to application insights. So this being hosted in Azure, we okay. Let's let's use application insights. You still with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. All right. You ready for me to switch to the next one? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go over a quick demo. Um, unfortunately, it's not an interactive demo. Um, we, we recently uh, closed our final stores. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over kind of what it takes, what we've done to help facilitate setting up the cloud monitoring framework, 
and then looking at some of the solutions we had in place for things like a video wall outage. Um, if you hadn't been in the stores, we literally had wall to wall monitors that had, you know, wall to wall advertising. It was pretty awesome. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at one of the challenges uh, that we faced with how we identify and react and recover from a visible outage on on a screen like the video wall system. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I assume in those situations, if uh, for example one of the video walls uh, monitor uh, actually showed a blue screen, it would be damaging to the brand and da damaging to uh, to the store itself. Um, which is something very important, and for our audience, it could be. This could be anything but uh, uh, like a, a, a locked uh, print server in a branch office or a SQL server that's that's down or anything of that that sort, right? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And and this this framework isn't just uh, you know obviously it's it's not just for on prem, but it really shines in the on prem to cloud hybrid solutions. Um, you know, we can do the same thing with uh, with a website. Obviously, hosted in Azure as a service, etc. We can we can scale up, scale down. But where where this really helps us is that kind of fulfilling the gap between, hey, I've got an on prem environment, and I really want something that is a little bit more robust, and and this kind of helps as a stepping stone from the the sole on prem hybrid and Azure solutions. It it really helps you kind of. You know, single solution that bridges all those gaps. Okay, perfect. So um, we, as mentioned before, we have an API that we provide through Azure, or uh, sorry, PowerShell command list. And one of the things that we find that was real challenging in, in our migration from SCOM to Azure is is really automating and bringing a select few of those hundreds of alerts over that were meaningful and actionable. And so we discovered real quickly that we needed to provide an easy er an easier <laughs> way to bring that stuff over. Um, so we, we engineered a few commandlets here um, and we're going to just run through some of those to kind of give you a feel of for what and how we've, we've done this journey from a legacy SCOM environment over to this new, Cloud monitoring framework. Okay, so are those commandlets uh, cr commandlets that you created, or are those uh, available right now in the PowerShell? Um, so right now they are part of our cloud monitoring framework solution. Um, we are going through currently uh, working on removing a couple of the the internal retail specific code paths uh, and, and we will be publishing this out on github soon it will include these powershell modules and commandlets that you see okay so uh for uh, us everybody that's listening because myself included uh keep an eye on itopstalk.com uh whenever this goes public uh, on github uh, we'll make sure to make an announcement for it yep so basically what we're doing is this leverages the Azure uh, public APIs to go and generate an action group inside the Azure alerting system. And you know we, lo we look at uh, things like your subscription, et cetera, because initially what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that the cloud monitoring framework worked outside of an existing uh, in environment or ecosystem or even subscription. So you could isolate this to provide common functionality across all of your resource groups, your different subscriptions, et cetera. Um, so we, we really focused on how we can make this a solution that would be kind of work across even multiple Azure subscriptions. And so what we want to do is, is basically create an action group in a specific subscription to handle our specific video wall ecosystem. And so what we have here is, is we leverage the subscription ID that, that houses the video wall solution. We've got a resource group name that we call cloud monitoring in there. 
And then we're creating an action group per service. So in this case, we have a video wall as a service. So we have a single action group for that service. So all alerts involving video wall will ultimately call this single action group. Okay. So if you were, um, for our audience perspective, if it's say I'm an independent con contractor, uh, and I look after two or three customers, which uh, I have onboarded uh, using something like Lighthouse. So I have access to their um, subscription. I could set that up in each of those subscriptions. So they monitor their own stuff in each of those subscriptions. Correct. Okay, perfect. And then we also have uh, a remediation. So this is the runbook that would go run as a result of the alert occurring and hopefully resolve the issue. Um, and so what we do here is we say, hey, again, for isolation, this, this remediation runbook could be, you know, in the video wall subscription or in, a, in another subscription. Like we could have a subscription just for on-prem resources or we could have a subscription for, you know, different areas of, of responsibility within the operational team. And so again, what we do is we say, hey, we, we've got this subscription, we've got this resource group, and then we have these Azure automation account, and then finally the run book that we want. Um, and then, uh, you know, what we do is we, we go through and, and create the action group and now we're identifying the remediation run book that we want to run whenever that alert occurs and keep in mind these are commandlets so we are ultimately generating a an assignment to this remediation settings and then down in a few more slides you'll see where we build all this together okay and then we have ticket details so should anything go wrong uh, obviously, we want to produce a ticket, something, a troubleshooting ticket that says, hey, you know, operations, email, whatever, go out and and address this alert because we couldn't solve it through automation and remediation didn't succeed. Um, in this case, we define the environment. So where this, this alert would be occurring. So in this case, it's production. Um, our ticket details. So we, we have a component ID. So this is kind of, you know, What's the resource name or what's the service name that uh, this alert is generated for? Um, for those of you familiar with the Azure alerting, you'll recognize the pound alert rule name. So that's a wild card inside Azure. So uh, the Azure alerting system replaces the pound alert rule name with the alert name that you enter inside the Azure alerting system. And then our framework also has the option to do uh, the results from your Azure alert in a HTML table. So normally you'd say, you know, pound search results would be a, a list of all your results, but we've added some extra logic inside of our framework. So if you do pound search results table, it puts that in a nice HTML table that makes, you know, drive space and other things look somewhat friendly inside of a, a ticket or an email. Okay. And then you can see where we have our raising location is the ticket location. And then we also include the search results. So this is really the key to help us, you know, you know, inside the ticket, we want to make sure that we include the raw data returned from our Azure alert as well for debugging and, and other purposes. So again, the, the whole purpose of purpose of this is to really help you either solve the issue through automation or give you enough root cause so you aren't guessing when you get the email. We try and include as much information as we can to help you go in and quickly identify and address the issue. Okay. So like the the error code or whatever would have been generated by the the alert itself uh, would be included yep. in the ticket. And and when we're talking about ticket here, uh, um, I know what we use internally, uh, but this could be tied into any ticket uh, ticketing system? Pretty much. I mean, it's 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 a PowerShell, uh, essentially it's a PowerShell runbook that gets called through Azure Automation. So currently we have it obviously geared for our internal ticketing system inside Microsoft, but you know, you can 
easily extend it uh, to leverage any of the other major players out there. You okay. know, a lot of people use, you know, yes, you, essentially you, if you have access there to, to their APIs or, or your own system, it's, it's PowerShell. You can, you can modify it and make it work. Okay. And then finally, we're, we're looking at the alert creation. So this is where we generate the alert in Azure for you. So we go through and we have, uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar. If you aren't, we have an option called custom JSON where you add a huge payload to the end of the alert. Normally you send it off to a webhook. In this case, you're gonna call our cloud monitoring framework. So we include the remediation settings. Again, that identifies which runbook and where that runbook is to run. We include the ticket details that were previously assigned and created. And then we ultimately create the Azure alert. And again, we, we have a generic name here, video all issue. Um, it points at this to the specific action group that you've created for the video wall system. And we say, hey, we're gonna look at the old video wall OMS location for our alert sources or our alert data. And then we specify the workspace type. So right now we support not only uh, the OMS log analytics, but also the app insight sources as well. And then okay. we have the alert query. So again, this is classic, you know, Azure alerting where we need to go and run a query. And when that query comes back with a result, then we, we go and generate an alert. So in this case, we're looking at anything that has an, a render issue of true, and we give you the computer name on which that issue occurred. And then we include the custom JSON in that entire alert package. Okay, so just so I'm clear, because I know in uh, Azure Monitor, um, it'll have access to a log analytics workspace and then you create alerts by saying uh if this query is true uh then do this or if this um performance metric or yep. this counter of like wh whatever your your trigger is uh is true based on the information that's in the log analytics then raise the alert and call the action group to do something Correct. so what you're doing here is basically replacing that or creating that. So we are, so if it exists, we overwrite, otherwise we create. And essentially we're, so normally you go in the portal and you set all the stuff up in a, in a, yep. in a wizard, next, 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 done type fashion. Yep. What we've done is we've incorporated all of that Azure API calls into this command lit. So, Again, the focus is to how do we go and automate or onboard to this system in some kind of automated uh, and, and air quotes, easier solution. And so we can go through and dump all of our SCOM legacy alerts and quickly put them in a loop and leveraging PowerShell rebuild those alerts inside uh, Azure and that and those alerts would then call this this uh, cloud monitoring framework. Okay. But if somebody has already got a log analytics, so they've been collecting data from some server for a bit, uh, and they've already got some alerts, this is not going to stamp them down. This is just going to uh, append to that alert list. Um, Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. It it doesn't it doesn't destroy what's there. It's it's a it recreates. So, for instance, if you already had an alert name out there called Video Wall Issue, this would recreate that alert. It, okay. it would essentially destructive overwrite. Um, but uh, you know, the, the goal here is is to anything you leverage with this would be calling into the cloud monitoring framework. So, obviously, if you've got some other alerts that send emails, etc you don't want to leverage the same alert name. That would obviously be a little bit more destructive. We, we unfortunately overwrite your previous alert. Okay. Just to... And then the... the <laughs> good Azure... thing to know. Oh, I'm sorry? I said it's a good thing to know, so you don't want uh, to... That you, yeah. You're making, making sure that you have like a proper nomenclature or naming convention for your alerts and for um, your queries 
is always a good idea because you, when something like that happens, you don't want to overwrite something that you've already got. Yep, yep. And then you also can specify in here your your time span window, so 30, 5, uh, et cetera. And then you can also so you can also specify how frequent you call it and then what your result count is. So for instance, if you're familiar with the Azure uh, alert uh, definitions where you enter your query and it says, hey, go run this for the time span of the last 30 minutes, but run it every five minutes. And if I get over one result, then generate an error. Yep. We There's additional functionality in the, the add cloud monitor alert command let to provide those additional details. By default, this, this looks back five minutes, every five minutes. And if it gets any results, it considers that a uh, alert condition. Okay. All right, and then what we're gonna do, again, unfortunately retail stores uh, are closed, but I wanted to walk you guys through what we did to address uh, video wall screen issues or rendering issues that we had occasionally throughout some of our older stores. So a real quick overview of the video wall service. Um, we had wall-to-wall uh, -wall monitors and every monitor had a video sourcing box that took two inputs, one from a static demo and the other one was from our dynamic uh, rendering farm. And so essentially think of it like an HDMI switch with a little bit of intelligence. So it would go, hey, I wanna watch a DVD today or I wanna watch something, you know, a, a computer source. So it would dynamically, uh, or sorry, we could we could switch it from one to the other. Okay. Um, and ultimately these machines, you know, there's for every four screens, essentially we had one physical, machine behind the, those screens driving the image. Um, and then ultimately those were all onboarded log analytics. And, you know, obviously being, you know, at 60 frames a second, we had some really near time requirements. Uh, if any screen was out, it was extremely visible by the customers. Um, and so what we had to do is we had to come up with a custom way to look at and review these screens. And so, we wrote a, a service that sits on the on the box that draws the image to the monitors. And what it does is it looks at the frame buffer going out and says, hey, do I have content or do I have dead pixels or am I showing a Windows blue screen? And so what we wanted to do is say, hey, can we go out there and identify when one of these machines falls over? And so what the service does that we wrote is it goes out and looks at, from each machine's perspective, it looks at the entire video wall and it breaks it down into sections that are rendered by the machine. So the graphic icon you see across the top is an entire video wall for one store. And then the subsection below is, a, is the three or four screens that are rendered by a single box. And then when we go through and we look at these at the, at the machine level, it becomes easier to go through and say, hey, is there a gap or do we see uh, a render failure inside this entire display? And so in the, in the case here where we go through and we clearly see a gap, what that does is that, that service will then take that box that says, hey, I'm on box X, I see a giant gap in my display and it publishes that through into log analytics. And okay. that starts our alert generation process. So basically like this, in this particular scenario, we've written a service to do this. However, if it was SQL or IIS, you could just interrogate the logs or, or any other telemetry that the, the, the software package that you want to monitor uh, is providing out of the box. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, you can even, you know, if you really wanted to, you could go uh, have a service that interrogates the internal, uh, you know, infrastructure uh, components of the server. So, you know, a lot of manufacturers out there have their own little, uh, you know, management software built into BIOS, et cetera. You could go interrogate that for 
you know, things like uh, drive, you know, heat uh, failures, et cetera, and, and report that out to log analytics and do something at that level too. Yeah. I remember years ago, I did something similar where uh, the intelligent printers were just starting to, to, uh, to emerge. Uh, so we'd have a little program that would just uh, call the uh, admin portal of the printer and, and do nothing but refresh once a minute. And if it got like a 404 or, or any other error on the HTTP stack of that printer would just uh, alert us that the printer was down. Yep, absolutely. So you, you know, our audience can adapt anything that they have in terms of monitoring and figure out ways with, to identify whether or not our service is up or down. In your case, you're just inspecting every frame that's going to that wall. Correct. Yep. Yeah. It, it was a, it's a rather unique problem. How do we detect, you know, across a hundred, you know, a hundred plus monitors and, you know, 25 plus servers, how do we go through and say, which one of these screens is not working? Right. And it's, it's, it's a tough problem. Um, you know, and it required a little bit of, uh, work with our, our software and hardware vendors to, to figure it out. But, uh, the results are pretty cool. And so real quick solution. So what we have is we have a, the, the video wall issue here and what we're gonna show here is how it flows through our framework. So what happens is we have the video wall issue. It gets picked up by the, by the box, gets sent through log analytics, log analytics uh, alert searches, uh, you know, the Azure monitoring search grabs it, says, hey, there's an alert. It sends it into our framework. Our framework says, hey, you defined remediation. We go run that remediation. That remediation jumps to on-prem, runs our runbook, which then goes back in and flips the video wall switch. So again, we had a solution where we could say, hey, either take your, your display feed from the servers or switch to alternate content. And so what this would do is the runbook would switch to that alternate content, go in, restart, restart the software on that box or reboot the box. And when the box comes back up and we detect it's successfully rendering, we could then switch the content back to that. So, you know, the solution was very specific for video wall, but it represents a really good use of on-prem detection, you know, logging it, getting it through Azure automation to then come back and do something on-prem to resolve or recover from the event. Okay. So it really comes down to, like we're using something that's visible as our example here. Uh, and, but you're really kind of switching if you were like me doing a presentation in front of an audience of a thousand and the, you just hits like hitting the logo button on the, on the uh, switching machine. So you, you display yeah. a nice logo on the screen while you're rebooting your box. Uh, so exactly. people don't actually see that your machine has just crashed. Yep, exactly. And, and again, we want to avoid any kind of visible brand it tarnishment. Obviously if, if, if we couldn't keep the lights on the, the video wall crashes all the time, that just looks bad. And there are some things we just can't, you know, solve for. Uh, but again, we, we want to make sure that we get in front of this stuff sooner than later. Obviously we want to avoid customer impacting events. Um, the video wall is more of a branding uh, impact, branding marketing impact, but, um, you know, prior to this, a video wall would go down. It'd be down halfway, uh, you know, for half the day before we'd get a store employee to call and say, hey, FYI, your video wall has been down all day. Uh, but, you know, obviously they, they have a job to do, which was to go and engage with the customer. They didn't, they weren't and should never be your ops on the ground. So yeah. um, this solution gets ahead of that. We know within minutes if we have an issue and obviously we can recover that and, and address it through automation faster than having an army of people, you know, monitor this uh, physically in the source. Yeah. So we really, we want to avoid the airport experience where you walk into the 
uh, departure gate, and basically one of the screen is a blue screen. <laughs> yes, yes. Not only because we're Microsoft, but obviously, yes, we want to uh, we want to make sure that it's as seamless to the customer as possible. I mean, we understand that stuff goes off the rails all the time. How do we address that, get ahead of it? And then this also helps buy us time to put out the small fires and then go focus on fire prevention going forward. Yeah, which, which is really, really important to understand. This, this whole yeah. thing, automation, is to provide the audience with more time so that they could do their real job and just not fight fires. Absolutely. Yeah, again, the, the goal of this is to help you help enable you to do more by removing a lot of the noise out of your ecosystem through automation and other things so that you can, you know, focus on things like redundancy uh, and, and really all of this is designed to buy you time so that you can focus on potentially fixing the root cause, not just recovering from it. And this helps you with the kind of recovery um, which a byproduct is, hey, if I don't have to go free up dry space every five minutes, now I've got an hour to go focus on fixing it the right way. Yeah. Okay. And and the remediation, uh, where we keep talking about, well, like we're going to like issue remediation, this is just, again, a PowerShell script that is sitting in Azure Automation that you're running against a target that's on-prem. Correct. Yep. Yep. And so I'm going to quickly switch gears here and show you a very high level uh, example of a remediation script. Obviously we do a lot more inside the remediation script for video wall. Some of it's proprietary, um, but I want to show you guys that essentially what you get with this framework is stubs to go help enable you to, again, address your issue, get time back in your day to focus on the real hard problems. So what we have here, and I'll zoom in here, is this is a, this is a essentially a PowerShell Azure Automation runbook that gets called by the framework. So it's got additional properties that it passes to this runbook, and then again we've got commandlets here that go and generate what we call a return object. Essentially, it's a JSON payload, but there's specific properties we care about, and some of these are the ability to write out output back to the framework, which ultimately gets sent back into our telemetry, our ticket, um, you know, anything you want. Uh, we have the ability to determine whether this remediation was successful or not. Whether we go ahead and generate a ticket, we can go and if your ticket supports it, your ticketing system supports it, we, we can manipulate the summary we can go through and, and add some other attributes like was this event customer impacting? Was it a security risk? We can even go through and pick up and attach log files. So here we, we generate a simple sample here that says this is a sample file, but we can attach that to the payload that if we need to uh, generate a ticket and your ticketing system supports it, we would attach this test.txt file or any other log file that you collect in the remediation back to your ticketing system so you have all the root cause, you know, logs, et cetera. So let's say the only way to get out of the situation is to reboot the box. Well, it'd be nice to grab some log files, you know, or memory dumps or something before you flatten the box and, and, and start it up again. So this script allows you to go and take that, grab, generate those, and then attach them, return them back to the framework, and ultimately put them back in your ticket. Or, you know, hopefully you resolve the issue and you can just say, hey, it was successful, and the framework goes, okay, nothing more to do. Um, but we've got these stubs, and then what happens is you actually insert your remediation code in here and do you know the video wall switch or free up the drive space, et cetera. And then based on those results, you run these other commandlets to say, hey, I was successful or I wasn't. And then ultimately that generates a JSON result that gets sent back into the framework when this runbook finishes and, that, and the framework looks at that and says, what do I need to do going forward? In this case here, we're successful. So the framework goes, oh, great, nothing left to do. Uh, that's fantastic. So, because 
we know by experience, and I think everybody who's listening right now uh, has had these problems before where uh, you get a call and somebody says, oh, my, my server has been uh, hanging. And then you say, okay, can you go and check the log? Oh, I already rebooted it. Well, okay, so now I can't see what was yep. going on on that server before you rebooted it. So if it happens again, call me. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and so, you know, kind of put it on your problem management hat. This helps you kind of, as a root cause analysis, you know, the more data you can get before you reset the service or reboot the box, uh, the more chances are, the, or the greater that value is in helping you identify true root cause and then obviously getting a handle of that and solving it. Um, but in the meantime, you know, you've got the, this framework to help you kind of recover quickly, but also grab that content as well. That's great. Great. So, and then to move on. So what we have here now, we flip the switch. You see video content is now good. Um, and so what happens is once we flip that content, we say, hey, everything's good. The runbook result comes back to the framework. The framework says, hey, you said success was good. I don't have anything else to do. So I write all this out to App Insights, or sorry, uh, uh, yeah, App Insights. And then, and then at that point, this framework steps away. Everything's done. Um, should the runbook fail, so success equals false, there'd be another path here where we would go through and actually go back and generate a ticket with all that information available at in in or at the the ticket system. Well, this is really uh, interesting in terms of using, and we keep talking about the framework, but it's really leveraging all of the pieces from Azure uh, in terms of Azure Log Analytics, uh, Monitor, uh, Alert, uh, Runbooks, Automation, uh, Hybrid Worker, to, to, to make sure that we our on-prem environment stays healthy by leveraging all of these um cloud services uh the all the the powershell framework set aside um this could basically be replicated for any from by any of our uh audiences uh even without the published uh the the the, the framework that you were going to be published they uh, they would just have to write their own uh, scripts to to, to do right. it all yep yep and and again this is it's not rocket science uh it, you know for for people new to azure and stuff it may feel like it but uh, in reality, the framework is there to kind of help get you through some of these challenges. Um, it can be challenging to connect all these dots. Um, we're getting better. Uh, but yeah, fundamentally, this is just leveraging Azure monitoring, Azure alerting, uh, and hybrid connections uh, for, for those of us who still have on-prem uh, resources. Um, which and is, then which the is probably about 80% of our audience at this point. Yeah. Exactly. And, and the framework just gives you a few commandlets here and there to help you kind of connect those dots uh, in a more seamless and automated way. Great. Great. So uh, in the case where we do fail, here's an example. We have internal insights. So again, everything that the framework does, it writes out telemetry to application insights. And so in this case here, we've got an example where this uh, one of our solutions failed. And so what it ultimately did was write out a piece of telemetry here that actually generated a ticket in our ticketing system for the video wall service. Um, and again, internally, Microsoft uses uh, its own ticketing system, but this is uh, an example of the type of telemetry that you can expect from the framework. Yeah, and that could be fed into anything from ServiceNow to uh, Remedy, yep. hopefully, and or any of those commercially available ticketing systems. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we we've, we've got uh, some experience going to ServiceNow here internally. Okay. Great. So, uh, have you thought about actually? Perfect uh, timing. I was just going to ask, have you thought about applying this type of framework to other scenarios? Yes, actually. So we've got additional uses and POCs that we've done. Um, 
So uh, POC we set up early on was using a smart outlet that you get from a lot of the vendors uh, that basically, uh, you know, responds to internal uh, network commands. So we would, we've got, or we had IP based cache drawers and receipt printers, and occasionally they'd stop responding. And so we leveraged this framework as a POC to go in and have the remediation runbook run on premise, go and tell that smart outlet, turn off and then turn back on and then wait 30 seconds and try and ping the cash drawer and receipt printers. So again, you know, instead of having a store employee go, ah, I can't eject the cash drawer to give this customer change or I can't print out a receipt, I have to call help desk. The framework would detect that and automatically restart physically power off, power on these devices. So it reduced the chances and the time it took uh, both with customer impact and potential customer impact. So ultimately uh, we didn't go with the solution um, because there's a phase towards using tap to pay, et cetera. So uh, everybody wants receipts or uh, wants email receipts and they, they use their credit card. So there's, the cash drawers and receipt printers over time just kind of phased out of use. Uh, it's yep. extremely rare now that we are even more now, uh, but it was extremely rare towards the end that that we'd have a cash drawer or receipt printer usage. Um, we we leverage it for what what's left of our on-prem SQL cleanup. So temp, uh, DB, et cetera. Still use it for drive space. Uh, you know, we, we like to generate logs. Um, so drive space cleanup is a huge thing. Um, in the cases where, again, you, you can't solve the issue, you can leverage this to, to basically essentially automate collection of root cause data mm -hmm. um, and ultimately restart the service or reboot the box or whatever you need to. But again, you know, the root cause data to help find the issue really is important. And, and that's one of the big wins here with this framework. Um, and then obviously, uh, we looked at infrastructure protection and failover. So we had... And well, we've had multiple incidents where you can't pick the environment that your servers exist in. You end up in like a broom closet, water closet, et cetera. And there's all ultimately multiple things that can fail out of your fa out of your uh, control. So one of the things we had was um, we had a water leak in a server room. Hmm. Okay. And so one of the things that we could leverage with this framework is is putting water sensors and humidity sensors in that room so if we detect there's an inch or more water in the on the floor we can tell the framework hey if you if this azure iot device with a water sensor detects humidity or water send a signal into log into log analytics log analytics gets that alert gets picked up goes into the self-healing framework the framework comes back on-prem and does two things. It tells all the machines on the rack to power down, and then it can tell the UPS shut down. So we kill all the machines before we have an electrical issue, and we also tell the UPS shut off. So if our mains go, we've got a separation there between our main power and the rack power, and all the machines are safely shut down before there is a significant uh, either heat or water or what have you damage occurring in that infrastructure. And then the other thing we do is as you migrate over and get merge more towards the Azure side of things, you can also spin up additional resources, leveraging AZR, et cetera, to clone your infrastructure should you have a failure at one point. So basically automating the, the, the uh, failover from on-prem to a cloud instance while you figure out why it, uh, what happened yep. to that broom closet? Exactly. Yep. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, I definitely see a lot of uh, potential um, scenarios where our audience can use uh, that whole architecture, but also the framework once uh, we uh, we release it. Uh, but just the 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 way you explain uh, and go through all of these pieces and how they talk to each other uh, it is very important for our audience to to know because this 
will take care of a lot of headaches that you have on a day-to-day basis, like the, the Monday morning uh, going through your, your inbox and seeing the 100 alerts that you got over the weekend that now you have to address because somebody who was on call didn't get them get to them. Yep, absolutely. Yep. All right, perfect. Uh, so where can we get more information about that? So uh, here's a collection of resources that we've, we've essentially leveraged for the framework. It's not an exhaustive list, but it covers all the high levels. Whether you use the framework or you just want to get started leveraging this for yourself using something homegrown, these are essentially the, the technologies we've leveraged uh, pretty much exclusively. Obviously, Azure Alerting, Action Groups, uh, Azure Automation, which includes the PowerShell runbooks, obviously hybrid workers, which allow you to connect to your on-prem resources and leverage that runbook internally. And then um, if you're looking into uh, some kind of load balancing or diversification across Azure regions, uh, I highly recommend looking at Azure Functions. You can put a friendly name in front of it, a load balancer, and then you can literally redirect traffic with an Azure function across multiple uh, Azure automation uh, endpoints. Okay, so the difference between uh, Azure automation and Azure Function in your uh, scenario here is Azure Automation actually runs the the runbook against the uh, the resources, and Azure Function does what again? So the Azure Functions uh, more like a it handles our decision tree. So okay, the Azure Function says, "Hey, is the payload that I've been given?" Um, so if you remember back in the commandlet examples, yep. we defined a remediation location. We also defined tickets, uh, you know, ticket properties. So the Azure function in our case says, hey, the Azure alert that is sent to me with that JSON payload that contains our remediation location and ticket information, um, it decides, hey, I'm going to go, if remediation is specified, I'm going to go leverage Azure Automation to go run that remediation. And if that fails or isn't specified, then I use the ticket properties to go call your ticketing solution. Okay. So I just wanted to be clear as to, because on both of them, you can run PowerShell script, but I wanted to be clear that in the uh, architecture that we have there, they have two very different functions. Yep. Yep. And the Azure function also uh, is, is written in PowerShell. And the commandlets talk directly to the Azure function. Perfect. So, so we again in the case where you have one or many uh, Azure resources, or sorry, implementations of the framework across Azure regions, the framework can run, you know, in in both of those regions and interact with the same common, you know, uh, logs, uh, you know. Azure automation locations, et cetera. Um, you know, so so we can go through and get uh, complete duplication and resiliency across the board. And then the Azure functions can also live in those resources as well. So you've got a traffic manager between them that says, this region went down, we're gonna direct you all, you know, over to this other region and you'll have duplication. And when the other region comes back up, it can do round robin. That's great. That's uh, that's really interesting, and and it opens up a lot of possibilities for uh, anybody really who's got to make sure that the lights are on in a, an hybrid environment. Yep, yep, absolutely. Okay, uh, I think we're at the end of our session. Uh, want to make sure that the audience, uh, anybody who's watching this right now. Uh, if you have any questions or you would like more information, go in the link below. Uh, there you will find a like a Discord uh, chat group where we're going to discuss uh, this uh, this session. And if you have any questions, uh, put them there, and I'll make sure that uh, either myself or Eric or someone will uh, answer that questions for you. So, uh, Eric, uh, thank you very much for spending the time with us. Uh, this was very, very informative, and it kind of opened up a lot of potential uh, solution in my head in terms of where uh, things like that can be applied. So I uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. And again, uh, 
be part of the conversation uh, at the link below and uh, check out all of the other uh, content that we have for uh, IT Ops Talks, all things hybrid. Thank you very much. Thanks.